Welcome back to Bene Naras and my basement, where we are still talking about Latin and writing and books and my pretty cute husband. <laughs> I was just saying specifically Ben's book. Um, <laughs> he's here working on his first novella and we, he's very graciously allowed us to do this on camera and we're troubleshooting some of the elements he's been having trouble with. So in this chunk, we're gonna talk about dialogue. And I think that's a major element of what you're missing here with your characters. I want to know their voices. And one of the best ways to do that is to have them speak. And they will help tell your story instead of you describing what happens. Yeah, so here's an example. Um, Marshall comes in, he looks around, he looks at some stuff, he sees some stuff, he wants to know some stuff. Um, you tell us he wants to know X, but it falls flat because you haven't actually given him any curiosity. Um, can he say something in his head? Can he wonder something? Can he interact with somebody and speak with them in such a way as to indicate that he's curious about this? Um, I think that that would create movement and motivation and we can start to relate to or like or hate him. Marshall seems polarizing. Um, which is not just important for compellingness, it's also important for comprehension. I've said this and I'll say it again. If your reader wouldn't know that something was true without being flat out told that it's true, it's really important to ask yourself how you can weave that into the scene. And dialogue, I think, is gonna be a, a really clear way that you can do that here. Yeah, it'll really help us to get to know Marshall. How does he interact with this character versus the other character? What is he thinking about? Um, is he grumpy? <laughs> a large part of mysteries is letting the reader form their own opinion about what happened and to be like really engaged in guessing who actually committed the murder. So the way your characters talk to each other and talk about this dead guy is going to help the reader form opinions about each of the characters. Cool. Yeah, I, I think a, an inner dialogue for Marshall would definitely be helpful. Um, uh, we talked in the last episode about how to get his character across and you know, his sort of sardonic observations of the world. And I think we can hear his thought process. Um, we don't need to be told what his thought process is. Um, it kind of lets the reader get to know him as a character even before he starts to interact with others. Dialogue, and that can be verbal dialogue, it can be thought process, it can be writing notes. Um, can get across so much without you having to blatantly say it. Um, it. It lets you fill in space, which is a great tool. Um, I'm also gonna mention physical and emotional response here. Um, and Marshall isn't the only person who needs character, your suspects do too. Um, people physically react to investigation and the way that they respond. They, I know. It's, Are you asking me that? No. Yeah, I'm asking you that. Where were you last night? Sorry. Sorry. I don't what you, know. I don't even what were you remember. doing with that pickle? The pickle? Why is it a pickle? Why are we on active fish? It should always be fish. <laughs> <laughs> and after that interlude. I'm sorry, um, continue. That's okay. <laughs> um, so, QED. Uh, people physically react to investigation, sometimes with fear, sometimes with anger. You know, the, the typical scene where the suspect runs off and the detective has to chase him, right? Um, so the way that they respond gives the detective and the reader and the viewer insight into truths that they might not mean to be telling. So let your characters respond. Let them respond verbally. Let them respond physically. Um, and weave that into your dialogue. Um, around the dialogue, there should be action. And later, as Marshall interacts with your characters, um, they just kind of have a summary of their perspective, but there needs to be body language. Um, from them, from Marshall. A concise summary is a detective's dream. Like they don't even have to write the report. The report's already been written, but that doesn't happen. So give them the opportunity to, to respond in a way that, you know, reveals more about who they are. That's exactly. Chatting lets things move. Yeah. Uh, and I see what you mean about how it, it's unnatural to have them just sort of burp out a summary with all the salient facts. Uh, you gotta you know, if only right you know the detective should ask and interact with them feel more organic um let the readers develop their own conclusions along with marshall instead of 
separate and treating it like a series of documents on a AP DBQ that they have to scour and find the, the meaning for. Right. And information that is revealed through discussion is almost always more compelling than information simply presented. Yeah. Um, I don't care that there are seven hills in Rome. I don't care. But if somebody mentions that they live on XYZ Hill and they can see the other six, then I get that salient information and it feels human instead. Um, and I think that's going to that's yes. gonna give life to it. Dialogue is a powerhouse for creating life and characterization. And you can overuse it, but not using it is more often than not a death sentence. Yeah. And nobody wants that. No. And I mean, we already have a murder, so like no more. Before we take a, another break, because this has been real short, um, I do want to caution against things like Marshall said this, block of Marshall speaking, going back to narration. Um, dialogue should not be, it should be dialogue, right? Okay. It should move back and forth between characters. It should allow for interaction. It should allow for um, thought processing as opposed to... It's not oratory. It's not oratory. Yeah. Right. And it's not third person narration set between quotation marks um i think that's more what i have right now which is good <laughs> it, it's, that also means it's time for cookies it cookies. does mean it's time for cookies do you want fish cookies i, don't want cookie. I actually uh, don't want fish cookies i would really like some chocolate cookies we have some of those too we'll be back shortly oh, all right <laughs> 